breath. From the Greek, pneuma. The movement of air. The essence of life. It's what we all need to stay alive. We don't think about it. Every second we are breathing, and that is vital to everything else that we do. I think for any of us in pulmonary and critical care, when we see that gasping for air, it's powerful. What can I do to make it easier? Research grows and builds. It's really through collaboration. Because ultimately, it all goes to one mission, improve the lives of our patients. The ATS research program has been the crown jewel at ATS. It was officially launched in 2004, and the ATS research program has raised and granted about $24 million in research funding to 302 investigators around the world. Those investigators have gone on to garner over $880 million in NIH funding. That's a huge return on our investment, 45 to 1. There's research in asthma, chronic obstructive lung disease, lung cancer, epigenetics, interstitial lung disease, lung transplantation, sleep disordered breathing. There's so much in our space that needs to be studied. It's very difficult to get funding for research from, let's say, the NIH if you really haven't done any research. So getting an ATS research grant early on in your career is a huge first step. It really has catapulted the careers of innovative researchers uh, within the space of pulmonary critical care and sleep medicine so that their work goes on to really enhance the science and improve the lives of individuals suffering from respiratory diseases. I think when one trains as a doctor and is looking to subspecialize. For me, it was thinking about really tough problems. I found the lung mysterious, hard to understand, hard to diagnose pulmonary diseases. So I think I really was attracted by the challenge and particularly the chance to think about patients who are really suffering. The chance to help is motivating, but also the challenge of not having much to help with, with poor treatments was motivating to see if we could help do better. Yeah, I think that first ATS grant, it was 2004. I had just launched my laboratory, and I began thinking and reading about possible ways to repair the injured tissue directly through regenerative medicine approach that might involve a cell transplantation. And unexpectedly, I really got obsessed with the, the project, the lab environment, the ability to ask and answer questions to test treatment approaches. The obvious uh, next question is, how are you gonna fund that? I could test some of my ideas, sending them into the American Thoracic Society as, as a grant proposal, and having a small pilot award uh, arrive that said, somebody else thinks you might have ideas that are worth investing in testing, which is extremely motivating to a young person who's busy seeing patients and, and trying to launch their laboratory. I hear our team at Boston University and Boston Medical Center is trying to approach lung disease by trying to help the lungs regenerate. Uh, lung regeneration is something that the body can do on its own given enough time. That's why patients are placed on ventilators to give their body time to heal. We're trying to engineer special cells from the patients called induced pluripotent stem cells 
That's really a patient in a dish, if you will. It's that patient's cells with the DNA from that patient. You can use their cells as a simulator to understand all the events that led to their disease and therefore design drugs that might reverse those processes. The ultimate dream would be a one-time transplantation of that kind of cell that would make that patient better in a, in a durable way. We're developing ways to deliver a patient's cells after a gene edit to fix what went wrong in the cells back in the airway in a way that they'll engraft in the stem cell compartment of the tissue. That's the ultimate form of lung regeneration. It takes many years to pass when you realize, oh, I actually had a domino effect of one grant after another, and that domino effect got started with the first grant, a pilot award in my case from the American Thoracic Society. I especially didn't anticipate that the real joy of the process was going to be that that domino effect would lead to training the future generations who go on to do better and, and their success becomes more important and actually more rewarding, impactful and joyful than one's own success. One of my favorite uh, quotes from Rumi, wear gratitude like a cloak and it will feed every corner of your life. I donate because I am thankful for the leaders that came before me that had the vision to create this amazing research program, for the leaders within the ATS who embraced diversity and inclusivity, for the staff of the ATS because of their immense passion and commitment to this organization, and because I believe that we all have a duty to lend a hand to individuals who are just starting out in their careers. To my colleagues, it's just an overwhelming feeling of gratitude. Thank you for helping me on the journey. I mean, the, the grants are the fuel, the, the dollars that make things work, but that's uh, just, just the start.